All right, Chicago, I am finally back. Welcome back to Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode here on NHL 23. And it has been about a week since I posted the last video. I'll get into that in a second. But yeah, we are back here with the Blackhawks once again. Of course, big decisions to be made, as I mentioned in the last video. Uh, you know, big cap crunch right now for our team. It may not look like it was $17 million in cap space, but two big time RFAs. Um, for us, I kind of am looking at all teams right now, but if I go to our contracts right here And I sort by RFAs Right here. Yep. We have Haminaho and Timothy Leonoff both RFAs and both looking for pretty good money So gonna have to figure that out. So yeah um, It's been about a week. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, I am in the process of potentially moving so that is uh, What's kind of going on there? We'll see what happens with that so yeah, it's been a busy week for myself, but um, but yeah, that's not what we're here for. We are here for the Chicago Blackhawks. Of course, I've probably said the name four or five times in a minute into this video, so a uh, great start here. But yeah, so I've had a lot of you know time to think about what I wanted to do. Obviously, with the uh, with the decisions at hand, and I think. The best decision for this franchise going forward is to unfortunately trade Alex Dabrinkit. Now, Dabrinkit, obviously a fan favorite. He's been here um, twice, but he's been here a long time. Um, one, two, three, four, five years in our stint. And then two, three, four, five, five years in uh, his first stint here. So 10 total years here in Chicago. This is his going into his 13th year in the NHL. He's just been a, he's been a great player. I mean, this dude's put up 30 goals, 70 at least 70 points every year. And I mean, in the playoffs last year, it was great. So, I mean, we could be making a mistake here, but I'm gonna bet on our future. I'm gonna bet on the potential of these two. I mean, Leonov only 21 years of age, put up 44 goals this year. So, uh, definitely want to keep him around. And actually, I'm gonna offer him his big time deal right now. Over eight years, he's only looking for 10 and a half million. I'm going to offer him 10 times 8 see if he accepts that. If we can get him for that price, I think that is pretty good. Actually, I have a better idea. Let's try that 12% uh, trick because uh, I'm going to need every dollar I can get. So 10, 6, 2, 5, minus 12%. So I can get him 9, 3, 50. So that would be the 12% trick. Let's see if that will go through. And then Lenny, uh, he's kind of asking for a little, like, short term is fine, but long term, I mean, 12 million is a little high. I wouldn't mind giving him a five year deal at like nine and a half. I mean, that'd put us at what, 19 million? So let me, um, I think what I want to do first, though, is trade to bring it. Now, I did a little pre scouting. Um, Actually, like a few days ago, I was going to record a video, but I, I didn't end up getting to that. So the only teams that are interested in ADB here are Buffalo, Dallas, and Nashville. And just to make sure, one more time, yep. So I definitely learned my lesson trading within our division, our uh, conference even, because Lucas Reichel absolutely... Uh, with the biggest troll job that he could like just in general just the biggest troll job and they went on a cup run I don't think they won the cup if I remember correctly but um, yeah he he knocked us up well yeah they would have had to went to the cup we lost in the conference finals but um, yeah they knocked us out mainly because of that um, maybe not mainly but part of a reason for that was having Reichel on their team and yeah, I uh, the only Eastern Conference team interested in Dabrinkit was Buffalo. So uh, yeah, we don't really need we don't need cap space, so we can't really take any roster players. So I'm honestly just gonna ask for two first round picks from Buffalo. This might not go through, but I'm gonna try it. But I think this is still good value on Dabrinkit. Now you could um, obviously I've been talking about I don't really want to trade him. He's been great for us, and he has. But you can also argue this is the time to trade him. He's 31 years of age. Uh, he's only going to get older, and he's probably going to, you know, progress the other way as he gets older. So we're kind of cashing out on his value right here too. So that is a good thing, you know, ma asset management, as we like to say. So um, yeah, in terms of our future, in terms of managing assets, this is a good trade for us. 
So Alex Debrinkit, I'm going to offer 4-2 first. Will that go through? And it does. All right. So that was pretty quick and easy. Alex Debrinkit is now a member of the Buffalo Sabres, who have a stacked roster. I think I looked, and they were, like, shit last year for some reason. So maybe they're uh, they're too good. So, yeah. Um, we'll see what happens there. I'm not really too worried about if the picks are good or not. It's just to get a good value for uh, Debrinkit. If they do end up being lottery picks, that would be great, or at least one of them. But the main thing is we now have that cap space to assign some of our players. Excuse me. So now we do have $26 million in cap space. So I think... Um, I mean, I'm fine with this, like a five-year deal. I want to make sure he doesn't go, like, crazy upwards, you know, at some point. I could wait it out, though, is the thing... Now, the only, the only thing I'm looking at here is uh, Will Sharp, the guy we just traded for from Pittsburgh, uh, left defenseman, uh, two-weight. He's just a solid all-around defenseman. Uh, his asking price actually is not terrible. Like, even for eight years, okay, you know, seven millions, whatever, but, like, if we can get him for, like, if we do that, doesn't he want three years, right? Yeah. I mean, the only thing is he could really grow and then want, like, ten million, so it might be worth the seven million now it'd be a big risk though i will say that um let me do the 12 percent trick on this and see what we're looking at so 7.8 minus 12 percent so i can offer him about uh let me just put it up here because it'd be six eight seven five that would be the contract i would have to offer him that isn't bad um we could do like a six-year deal and then once again i'm gonna try to save every dollar i can six nine two five minus twelve percent would be five and a half mil and that is a great contract i think so i think just before his asking price goes up because i can you know i can play around with uh lenny's asking price you know it, it might go down over time but I want to make sure I take advantage of this lower offer here. So I'm going to offer him five and a half for six years. Now you could call it premature. We haven't seen, I mean, he's only, you know, like his first year at 19 points. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't really proven himself yet. But again, I'm just going to bet on him. He does hit and he does block shots, which is good. Um, so yeah, he's yeah, it's a big boy, 6'3", 203. He, uh, he looks pretty good. So I'm going to bet on him living up to that potential living up to that overall and just hoping we can uh, get the best bang for our buck right there so another thing i do need to sign is a backup goaltender because sebastian cosa is most likely not going to resign with us um and then i also need bottom pair defensemen because i have the four and then our fifth defenseman right now is ethan del mastro who is not great so and i did want to show you guys one person i did see in free agency here for a defenseman um just for things to come full circle i'm not gonna sign anybody yet because i want to wait to see what our cap is looking like and i don't think he will go anywhere anyway but look at this connor murphy is a free agent now he is 36 years old so he probably will drop to like a 79 80 you know somewhere around there but i mean with that little x factor he might you know provide some value for us uh and obviously just a bit he was a great defenseman for us in the early days of this franchise um yeah, look at this. We haven't had him for, like, it's been, like, five years, which is crazy to think about. But he's been everywhere. Toronto, Arizona, Carolina. And, I mean, shit, last year he was a plus 28, 15 points. I mean, he's just been a good defenseman his whole career. So we couldn't make things full circle, bring him back. Um, let me make sure our coaching staff is good because I'm not remembering too much. There we go. All right, everything's good. So let me advance a few days now, see if any of our guys sign. And Will Sharp must be... Dude, that was... The, what? <laughs> All right, Leon off signs. I don't know why Sharp is, like, pissed. Does that mean his asking price raised a lot? Now, now he doesn't want an extension. That is great. Yeah, dude, it's not my fault you changed... Ah, whatever, dude. See, this is what I mean. This thing is really weird. So, we're going to wait on him. Um, did Lenny's price change at all? Yes, now it's still okay. Actually, this might be about the same as what he was looking for. 
So we have $18 million in cat space. So if I sign him to that five-year deal for like, I can offer him nine and a half, I think. Um, that would leave us with about, what would that be? $9 million in cat space, right? So I think that would be enough to sign Will Sharp at some point. It's just a matter of when we can get him and the best price for him. Um, we do also have Saros as a trading asset in the offseason if we don't feel he is a good fit anymore or if we need if we need to clear that cap space and it's just not worth paying him so um yeah i don't know if i want to wait it out with him or just get him signed and get you know just i think i'm gonna offer him the nine and a half over five if we can get him signed you know it's a decent enough term to where i'm not too worried about it and his asking price should be similar by time that contract comes up anyway so and he does sign. All right, great. So now we can go ahead and sign our defenseman. And we do have about $10 million in cap space, so that is good. Um, let me see if Connor Murphy is still out there. That's the guy I want to target. Um, he should be, right? Yeah, there he is. So just a one-year deal for him. Um, a lot from one and a half mil. And then the other guy for the left side I was looking at. Um, who was I looking at, actually? Unless whoever I was looking at got signed. Caleb Jones is also here. Um, shit. We could just bring both of them back. I mean, I don't know. We don't. Oh, yeah. Mahura, I think it was, right? Yeah, because it says he might fit on defensive pairing three. So I'll offer Mahura here. And he's only asking for Anna K. Uh, two way contract. Yeah, I'll definitely take that. And then, you know what? Just to see if we can. If, if the chemistry works, I'll play him. Uh, Caleb Jones will give a contract offer to just some defensive depth for us and then goaltender wise I don't think that's interest from another team. Yeah, that's just our RFA offer um, I don't really know who's good <laughs> To be honest Montembo did great last year in a backup role for the Islanders um, But then the year prior well, there's only five games I guess but yeah, he's had a weird career. I think that's like his... Well, he started 54 games for him, like... And uh, in the first year, and he actually put up decent numbers. So, let's go with Sam Montembeau here. Give him a shot. Uh, just a one-year deal, 800k. And then we should be good to start the next season. Obviously, we took care of the big business that we needed to. Connor Murphy is back with us, as well as Caleb Jones. Mahura is also here, as well as Montebo. So all four of them accept those offers, which is good news for us. $10 million still in cap space. Did Will Sharp's uh, extension do anything? No. Yeah, I don't know why he, like... That's so stupid, like, their ask, asking price raises, and then it they, like, get offended when you offer it. I don't know. So you could argue that we should have offered him day one of free agency, that extension. He might have accepted it at that point. But I didn't know what our cap space uh, or our cap situation would look like. So um, as Kosa still needs to be signed by a team, it'd be funny if he actually accepts our offer and then we have him and Montembo backing up Saros. I could just leave them both up in the NHL, whoever plays better. But or he's just going to stick it out. All right. And it <laughs> doesn't matter to me. So lines for this year um that's a plus five i like to see that and then one of these two is gonna have to play the right side and we get a plus three either way so um leonov i mean shit he had 44 goals on the left side last year so i'm gonna stick with him there if that line isn't working out i can uh, always move over and then as far as these lines go um ryan green so Petit is listed as a fourth liner. I don't want to over push him. Porskov's just a depth guy. I think he did really good for us last year though, didn't he? And eh, you know, decent. 23 points. Okay. De Silva's actually listed as a minus score in forward, but um so was McAllister. I guess 80 overalls just aren't good enough anymore. I'll definitely send Persaud down, but I think I'm Let's see, McAllister is a center, that's right. So I can go like this. Like that, right? Just go based off of overall, unless I want to do something like that. But 
I'll leave them there. Yeah, I'll just, I'll leave, I'll leave that how it is. And then defensively, that's staying the same. <laughs> that's actually a plus five, but we are going to move up Casparitis and move him over there. That doesn't get any chemistry, which kind of sucks. But yeah, Casparitis just won't grow, man. I don't understand. Uh, these two aren't a negative. Let me see if Mahura in there is any difference. Uh, not a negative either, so... Um, honestly, I'll start Caleb Jones. I'll just reunite that old, you know, they they used to be here, so uh, we'll go with them there. Jones and Murphy, that is. And then in goal, we have Saros and Montebo. And Saros still has franchise potential, which is pretty crazy. He's 34 years old. But let me uh, move down Purcell. That is the wrong button. Go ahead and give him a year in the AHL because I believe he was playing juniors last year, so he can finally get um, some time in the in a professional league, I guess, if you want to consider that. And actually, I believe both these guys are low elites right here. Yeah, Olsen and Barry both low elites on that top line with Persaud, so that's looking like a good line. AHL team not looking too bad this year, at least offensively. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, defensively, it's not great, but um, Jokinen's. You know, top prospect of ours. Coleman's a top prospect. So, we'll see if those guys can do something. Can I edit this anyway? Like, no? Just, alright. And then Galchenyuk there. Alright, I'm good with that. Again, not too worried about the AHL. Um, maybe, maybe I should be, but... I mean, honestly, I'm just... I'm laser focused on this team. I don't understand why Bedard is not on the top line power play. Like, I, I know Natchez is good, but... Like, damn. Alright, let's put him up there. I think he's got better face off, so I'll put him up there. Honestly, I'm good. And honestly, I'm just gonna leave it like I know the computer is gonna have these guys as whatever. Actually, I want the dart up there though for sure. Alright. I'll just let the uh, computer decide the rest of the lines. You know, when I seem to edit them, it doesn't seem to work all, th all the time, so. Um, yeah, whatever Whatever the coach thinks, I'll, I'll let him do his job for once, actually, so. I could move Mahura down. Honestly, he is on a two-way contract. Just to help out that defensive core a little bit. Which I think I will do, actually. So, Mahura. But I want to make sure that, uh, low elite, or that medium elite, uh, defenseman is still in and not. Because this is the 7D, right? Yeah. So get him out of there. For Jokinen. Yeah, I'm good with that. And then just stick it out with the minus 3 in the bottom. These two are the medium. Yeah, that's, that's honestly perfect for me. So maybe the HL team can do something. Maybe not. I mean, their goalies aren't great. The bottom pair defenseman isn't great. So... Um, may not be anything too special, but NHL team is looking good. Um, we're starting to get to the point where 83s are only depth forwards, so... Uh, that is something. You have to have, like, create, like, 50 90s on your team to even be decent. But I think we will stick with the team that is in front of us right here. And one thing we do have to do is name a new assistant... Uh, two assistant captains, it looks like, actually, because Kane... And yeah, we did trade our captain, and he had to break it with the other one. So, um, first alternate, we need one on defense. He's been our number one defenseman, or he took over that role last year. Kevin Korczynski is going to get a letter. And another letter, I'm going to go with... That is tough. You could argue Murphy or Jones because they, are, uh, they had tenure here. But I am going to go with Natchez. You know, he's a veteran for us. I mean, he's getting paid the most on our team, so I hope he can lead the team a little bit. So those are going to be our captains, and we are here in the 2029-2030. We are officially enter entering the 2030s, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, yeah, that's seven years away in real life. That is, whew, That shit is crazy. So let's get to the start of the season here. Um, I do apologize if I'm off my game commentary wise. It's just it's been a while 
So hopefully I can get back into it here. Game one of the season against the Nashville Predators. Could have been a landing spot for Dabrinkit, but like like I said before, we are not going to trade in our conference after that um, Lucas Reichel situation. So game number one of the season here in Chicago up against the Predators. First period is 2 nothing Predator. Why do we start Montembeau? Um, Evangelista and Kamel for them, two of their young prospects. Uh, probably not too young anymore, but I don't know why we're starting Montebo first game of the season. But shots are 10. And we could have had Saros in his return game. Like, what are we doing? Uh, yeah, shots 10 to 6 Nashville. We got some catching up to do. Second period. We're not doing that so far. Uh, Moser for them. Third period. We only have 11 shots. Like, what the. Like, this uh, high powered offense. There we go. Nate gets a letter, gets a goal. We'll take that. Um. We're a little bit rusty here to start the season. Power play goes nowhere. Seven minutes left. We still at least need two goals. There we go. Petit in his first game in the NHL scores his first NHL goal, but it will not be enough. Um, but a cool moment for Petit. Yeah, and he gets the first star. So at least that's something to cheer about for that game. Uh, but we do follow the Predators there. Oh, and one thing I do want to check is Sharp's... Um, contract extension let me see if and yeah he yeah see he wants to get paid now so I'll, I'll wait till mid-season to check on that but i think what we'll do here we'll get a couple months of simulating done and then uh, we'll call it there but we'll just get an idea of what this team's looking like for this year uh i'm not too concerned with the regular season as long as we make the playoffs i we just need to we just need to win the cup like it's that simple We've had, you know, we've. Been, I think we've paid our dues of going through it with this team, um, where we should, you know, we should be able to celebrate. And I mean, it, it's on the team. I'm not saying we just deserve one just because we're good, but you got to earn it. But, um, uh, short time feel. Oh yeah, he's gonna become an RFA. So let me uh, trade the rights to Kosa real quick. Get something for him. I did see we're not going crazy yet hopefully we can find some fire here soon um kosa uh <laughs> a third for day a third and day harnay or a third and day harnay they just rewired it um i'll just take the the later third i guess i don't yeah just just give me a pick for him thanks But yeah, we are, uh, we're only like, eh, 14 games in. I mean, that's, that shit, Bedard has 10 goals of 14 games, by the way, but, um, I'll get the rest of this, let me get at least to the rest of this month to think about a line change here, because sometimes we can just catch fire, we go on the win streaks where I'm like, alright, we can't end on a loss, and we go crazy, so a couple wins there, another loss, see, we just, we're not consistent enough, we get a couple wins and then we just give them right back, so, 11 7 and 1 to start the year not crazy bedard is point per game which is good to see but yeah i mean our we're right outside a playoff spot let's see this so the first line 14 points 19 and 15 they're doing solid plus seven uh second line 14 15 and okay only 10 from caswell this is his first line on that top six or first time on that top six so he is struggling a little bit. The third line is serviceable. Fourth line. Holy shit. Petit has seven goals. Um, wow. Holy hell. The sub has nine. Uh, six, is that right? 16 points? Holy shit. All right. I'm going to swap. That's yeah, a minus two. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to move those two up just based on that play. My God. Um, then we're also going to swap Caswell and Leon off. Hopefully get Caswell going a little bit. Um... I mean, Leon could pick it up a little bit, too. Uh, defensively, 9 points for Korczynski. Yeah, they're plus 11 and plus 14, though. Actually, Pelika's the big point getter this year so far. 17 points in 19 games. Second pair, 11 from Kasparitis and 7 from Sharp. I think that's the best point pace he's had, yeah. So Kasparitis off to a pretty good start this season. That's good to see. Uh, and then that bottom pair is doing okay. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then is it our goaltending? Uh, no, they're doing solid. So maybe we're just, uh, you know, timely goals we're giving up. I don't know. I mean, our offense could be doing a little bit better. But, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see if those lime changes do anything. Let's get another month in here. And then, um, we could look. Maybe I can get up to the deadline. We'll see what we're feeling. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this is a well, see, again, we get two wins and then we give them right back. Let's see what we do. Okay, two wins. All right, there we go. There we go. Point streak. Keep it going. All right. And then come back with a win, though. Shit, man. I hate them two in a row. I hate them two in a row. And then, yeah, another loss. I mean, 2012 and two, it's not bad. Um, Pretty interesting year for us. All right. Bedard, 37 points. Still leading the way. Let's see what our lines have been doing. Very interesting so far. So, Catone, 22 points is not has not been great and then oh god lenny only with 23 as well um all right i guess he has one more than him but all right casuals picked up a little bit 20 points uh nhs 24 points is pretty good on the second line i thought it was a lot better for a second and then 21 for leonov they're not scoring i mean bedard is doing his job and shit he's got 37 points but the rest of that top six hasn't been incredible uh petite has 17 goals i might have to move him up and De Silva has 25 points. That third line has been crazy. Or these two have been crazy. And then Porshkov. Those guys are all doing fine. Um, Kalser has to get plus 12. But let me put Leonov on that top line just f because. And we have the two snipers there, though. Maybe Bedard. He has gold tape to tape, though. Maybe he'll become more of a playmaker. But um, actually, he hasn't been. Yeah, I don't want three playmakers on one line. Okay, so let me do... Um... I don't really want to throw Caswell on the third line, but Petit deserves some ice time, you know, um, in the top six after that play. So I'm going to move Katone to center and then do that just to get the positional, you know, a little bit better. And then... Or I could do something like this. I could just say fuck it with Petit, but um, we already have a power forward on that line, so let me move him down here. So we're going to go with uh, Leonov, Pedard, Lenny, Natchez, Catone, Petit, Caswell, Green, De Silva as the top nine. And then defensively, 16 points for Korchinski, 31. Yeah, this is, uh, this is very interesting. Korchinski had 70 points last year, and now Pelik is the one that is getting the points so that is pretty i mean i'm not mad at it either one of them can pop off it's fine with me but um just an interesting how one of them goes off and then the other one all right so casparitis completely slowed down uh 14 or excuse me 12 points there in 34 games so that second pairing hasn't been great at least putting up points plus or minus they're okay and then goaltending wise, ooh, they definitely took a dip. A couple of rough starts from Montembo and Saros. I think, well, I guess he only went down a couple, but still, it hasn't been amazing. So this has been an interesting year. I don't know if De Silva's uh, production will drop off because Petit is no longer on the line with him, but um, yeah, I think I know this video has probably been you know decently long, but let's get up to the deadline. Or at least, let's simulate another month. Uh, and we're not doing bad, but, I mean, I you would think this team would do a little bit better. We've kind of struggled here offensively. So, we'll see. We're get, Okay, here we go. We're having a good month of January so far. Okay, there we go. See, I like that. We get a loss, but then we bounce back. And, okay. All right. Hold, okay, come on. Holy shit. We just threw all that away. I mean, 29, 19, and 2 isn't bad, but look at this. We lost 5 in a row, right? All in regulation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 of our last 7. I mean, we could have been like 35 wins at this point. We could have been like President's Trophy level, but um, thankfully our division hasn't been incredible either. Um, we're one point ahead of the Jets. We did get a win against them. We beat them all three times this month, so that helped. But still, I mean, we. I hate to nick nitpick but i mean shit like we could have we could have done so much better there um uh, actually i don't want to i don't want to look at it from this screen let me take a look at our lines so leonov 28 okay he hasn't done shit on that top line um all right lenny's 
picked up a little bit. Petit has 20 goals. He hasn't been crazy. Catone, still, yeah, look at offensively, we're struggling. I don't know what's going on. Um, let me try. Petit's up to an 83, which is good. Caswell 26 is actually a minus 4 now. Okay, that that third line is not working out as well as I thought it would. Um, I don't even I don't even know what to do. Do we try something like this? I mean, shit. We can give uh, Petit the chance on that top line. And then we'll still have Sniper, Playmaker, Power Forward all around. Okay. Um, let's try those combinations. Oh, I forgot to check defense real quick. So, top pair I figured is doing... Okay, yeah, they're doing good. Uh, plus 12. I think they were higher earlier, but... Um, only 23 points for Korczynski. It's pretty interesting, but... Yeah, 41 from Pelica. That really explains it. Um, and then Kasparite is 16 point. Yeah, he dropped off. Damn. And then 16 from Sharp. Um, I can't say they've been completely shut down. They're only plus 4 and plus 7. But... Maybe we can move Sharp up here because Pelica seems to be the offensive defenseman this year. And then try to get Kasparitis going playing with Korchinski, you know, more offensively minded defenseman. So... And then even Korchinski can get better numbers playing with a... Uh, I mean, Kasparitis is listed as an offensive defenseman, but he hasn't put up crazy numbers, so... Saros is doing fine. Montebo is shit. Oh my god. I don't know what... He what was that like a nine fourteen or something earlier? Yeah, he's negative in the record. Yeah, I think Montebo has been a huge issue. So let me see. Is there anybody that I can sign? There should be a couple like eighty something overall goalies, right? Maybe not. Unless that's minor starter. Okay, let me. Uh, I I don't even want to wait to the deadline to make that move, but. Yeah, I think we'll wait till the next episode to do that. Um, been an interesting first half of the year for sure, but we're looking like we, we should make the playoffs. We need to address the backup goaltender situation, and we need our offense to step up in some type of fashion. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, tuning back in, I guess. Uh, you know, I know it's been a while, so I appreciate you guys coming back. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, just let me know down below. Let me know. Uh, that you missed me, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I should be back, hopefully posting decent. I can't, I can't make that promise, to be honest. I'm still in the process. Um, so I can't make that promise, but hopefully I can start getting videos out. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, you guys take care.